Salve, anyways, this is the Los Angeles Kings. Ten years of mostly drafting futility, especially in the first rounds, other than Tanner Pearson and Kempe. So we're going to start with 2012, we're going to go to 2022. So Tanner Pearson was a good pick. First overall, 30th overall, 30th in the draft. Left wing, coming into this season, he had 576 games, 132 goals, 135 assists, 267 points, 188 penalty minutes. So he was a key member of that 70s line, which got them the last cup they'll probably ever win. Same year, fourth round, 121st, Nikolai Prokar, 43 games, 4 goals, 10 assists, 14 points, so he was alright. Colin Miller was another player I liked, he was in the ill-fated Martin Jones trade when they got Lukic, very bad trade for the Kings and why they'll never probably win another cup. But 387 games coming into this season, 29 goals, 107 assists, 136 points, so that was pretty good. Thomas Hicker that same year, didn't really pan out, 27 games, 2 goals, 5 assists. Paul Ledoux was an alright player, 6th round pick, 181. 70 games, 5 goals, 13 assists, 18 points. Then Nick Ebert didn't really pan out, a 7th round pick. 2013, they traded to get back to the second round to draft Valentin Zykov, who they really thought was going to pan out. They were banging on the tables and everything. But he only had 55 games, he only had 7 goals, 17 points, so I guess not. That same year, Justin Auger, 103rd pick, 2 games. Hudson Fashing, 4th at 118, 38 games, 3 points. Bardo Sock would have panned out. He was actually in some allegations, but he was a critical player with J.S. Ruby or whatever his name was, the goalie, when uh, Manchester won their uh, only Cal the Cup in 2015. Then 2013, fifth round pick 148, Johnny Brodzinski. He's still kicking around. 84 games, 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points. He was an alright player. Same year, 178th overall, Zach Lee Leslie. Didn't do anything. Kubalik, I think he was the guy they traded to the um, Chicago or something. 202 games, 62 goals, 116 points. So he was a decent player. Adrian Kempe in the last 10 years is the only all-star the Kings drafted. That's pretty bad. First round, 29th overall, Sweden. 390 games, 90 goals, 96 goal assists, 186 points. 208 penalty minutes. So he's a decent player, nothing great. Same year, 2014, second round, 50th pick, Roland McEwen. He was in a bad trade for the Kings, but he's only played 10 games, 3 assists, so I guess he didn't pan out. Alex Latunanen, he was supposed to be a defenseman, he didn't pan out. Then the third round, 90th pick, I like Amadio. He's better than Lozado, a lot of the players they got on the team now. Right-handed player, 229 games played, 27 goals, 31 assists, 58 points. He's doing good on Vegas. Steven Johnson, the guy who used to live down the block from me with the same name, didn't pan out. Alec Dillon, didn't pan out. Jake Marchman, Matthew Mistel, Spencer Watson, none of them panned out. 2014, 17th overall, 210, Jacob Middleton. He played 80 games, 4 goals, 17 assists. Better than many of the defensemen they got now. Eric Cernak, second round, and 43rd overall in 2015. A lot of people like him. They kind of burned the bridges with him. 16 goals, 59 points, 201 penalty minutes, so he panned out. 2015, third round, 374. Alexander, another Russian, never played for them. 2015, fourth, 99th pick, Austin Wagner. Bad contract, buried in the minors for the most of the part. 171 games, 22 goals, 40 points. Matt Smoltz, Chaz Redenkopf didn't do anything. 2015 seventh overall, seventh round pick, 194th overall, Matt Wah. 206 games played, 10 goals, 55 points. So for the Kings, he's done all right. Kale Clogg, second round pick, 51st overall. 58 games, 2 goals, 16 points. They kind of screwed him over. Then 2016, fourth round pick, 112. Jacob Mulberry, 19 games, 2 assists. He's better than any of their left handed defensemen, but because Blake, an arrogant, egotistical asshole, didn't draft him, he's buried in the minors instead of playing over mediocre Mikey or some of these other trash garbage players. So I'm disgusted with the organization and the franchise. 2016, fifth round, Michael Smith, one game, Jacob Friend. 
seventh round, one game, like nothing. Then 2017, Gabe Velarde, 89 games, 18 goals, 37 points. He's got like four goals already to start the season. He's probably the last decent draft pick they've had since Kempe, which is saying a lot, especially in the first round. Jad was an agenda pick. They drafted him because he's got two moms. He's been garbage in the NHL. He's on pace for a minus 100. Matt Vallada is basically another waste goalie. Mikey Anderson's like a like a, another trash player. It's almost like Clark, who's like a right-handed uh, Jack Johnson, where I could see him being minus 100. But 117 games, 4 goals, 20 points. 4-20, not in a good way. Marcus Phillip, Cole Holtz, Drake Rimsa, Matt Kapari is another bust. They took him over K K K Kay Miller, who is a 6-5 left-handed defenseman. 64 games, 6 goals, 14 points. He's barely had any chance to really been in the NHL. Akil Thomas, undersized black player, garbage. Bulat's Russian, Aiden Dudas, Henrik Johan, Sodenbrand, Jacob Ingram, all bust. Alex Turcott, one of the biggest busts in NHL history, fifth overall. Toby Bing, just a garbage player, 106 games, one goal, 14 points. He's not going anywhere. Arthur Kaliev, he might pan out to be like 20, 30 goals type of player, about 20 goals in a season. 81 games, 15 goals, 28 points. He's all right. He's like a third round player that can play on the power play. Samuel Pagama, second round, 50th overall, four games, done all right. He might, he might pan out. Probably a third round player. Lucas Parrick, another wasted pick. Jordan Spence, undersized garbage play, is like 5-6. Two goals, eight points, 24 games, just a wasted player. Kim Nusainen, another undersized player. Braden Doyle. Ander Lee, he's a big guy. He's a black player, I think. He might pan out to be like a third, fourth liner. Quantum bust, Quinton Byfield, the biggest bust, second overall. The, the black player taken as the biggest bust in NHL history. Five goals, he only had four goals, so one's a game-winning goal that he lost in the face-off they gave him, 11 points. Just a garbage play, he can't score. He'd need 200 shots on goal to even have 20 goals or a chance at it, and he can't even get it on that. Helga Granz, I think he can pan out, second round, 35th. Brock Faber, second round, 45th overall. He was in the ill-fated Fiala trade. He was never going to play for the Kings. Castus Manila, third round, 66th pick, five-foot player, another waste. Alex Lafreniere, third round, 83rd pick, maybe. Fourth round, 112, Juke, Mark Cannon. Fifth round, 128, Chromiak, I think will pan out. I think he'll be at least a third line player, 30, 40 goal type of player. Uh, fifth round, Ben Meehan, Atu Jamps in the seventh round. He's not going to do anything. Brant Clark, I like that pick. He was a top-rated right-handed defenseman in the run. They were picking at that point. But he's probably more of a third-pair power play specialist. Francesco Pinelli, a little bit undersized. Another guy that he might be all right. He might make it more of a third, fourth line player. Samuel Hellenius, he's 6'6". I could see him being a good penalty kill player. I saw him using the size and this big stick on like Byfield and punches over with a little kid stick. Kirill Krasanov, he'll probably never play for the Kings, but he would probably pan out if he did. Jack Hughes, undersized garbage player. Kenny Connors, uh, Angus Booth might be the right player. He's got some size. Odo Salen, I'm not holding my breath. Jared Wright, Jack Sparkus, probably not. Caleb Lawrence might be the right player. But yeah, you can see they're not really doing much. And if you look at who's picked this year so far, seven games, Velarde's got four goals, seven points. Kopitar, one goal, six points. Kempe, four goals, six points. Fiala, one goal, five points. Trevor Moore, five assists. Ayafalo had two goals, five points in four games. Matt Waugh has three goals in seven games, so that's not going to last. Jersey, one goal, four points. Arvidsson, one goal, three points. Drew Doughty, the most overpaid player in hockey, seven games, three points. Denault's got three goals in seven games, but Kaloff's struggling. Arthur only has one goal in six games, so it doesn't look like he's doing it. Byfield's been carried by Velarde and Ayafalo, he's not doing it. Lemieux's not, you know, he's doing it right. Medio Mikey, uh, he's got like.